Okay, good morning. My name is uh, Satish Menon, and uh, welcome to the uh, version 11 Agiline Suite uh, webinar. A uh, couple of uh, housekeeping notes uh, before we jump into the content. Uh, first, we will be recording this session and uh, uh, the, the recording along with the uh, foils that I'll be walking through here. We will be emailing that to all people that have uh, registered. Uh, uh, we should be able to get that to you by tomorrow at the latest. Um, and second point, uh, on that GoToWebinar panel, there is a question section where you can um, uh, post questions and uh, we'll be monitoring those and we'll respond to as many of those as possible uh, as time permits. Um, the, all the attendees will be in uh, mute mode uh, throughout the session. So really that uh, text question is the uh, best way to uh, communicate with us. So with that, let's uh, jump in uh, to the content. So we're gonna lead with uh, a new marketplace. Uh, so Google Shopping Actions is a new marketplace from Google. Um, if you click on that link there uh, that I posted, uh, let me bring that up. Um, this is uh, Google's uh, attempt at creating a marketplace around the various properties that uh, Google uh, manages. Uh, this includes search, uh, YouTube, uh, uh, and so on and so forth. Um, and um, so uh, this is uh, basically the uh, initial launch of a new marketplace service. Um, and the idea being that regardless of uh, which uh, Google property that you might be on, whether that's uh, the site or others, that there would be a universal shopping cart and an instant checkout that's available for customers to buy directly on Google. Um, for some of you that may be familiar with Google Express, that's sort of the underlying engine that will essentially power uh, that shopping cart and checkout. Um, so some of you may have already been using Google Shopping Feeds as a service which has been available for a long time. Um, and that, the way that that has worked is that you basically provide them a feed of your product data and then a link to your website page. And as the customers find those, basically uh, Google refers those uh, customers to your website where they complete checkout, right? So that service will continue to exist and continue to behave exactly the way it has. This is a completely new service that um, uh, from a feeds perspective, it has some similarities, but in terms of all the rest of the customer experience, it is completely new. And uh, what Google has found is that by essentially providing this uh, instant checkout type of uh, approach where payment uh, information is stored and people are able to buy it just like with the one click on Amazon, that conversions are much higher. Um, so they've been running some pilots with uh, some large retailers like Target and, and so on. And, and it's been shown that there's basically about a 10 to 30 percent increase in uh, incremental sales, right? So, so that's really the motivation for uh, this service. Um, there is a fee, uh, just like with most marketplaces, uh, there is a fee for these sales that do happen uh, across these sites uh, and through this uh, mechanism. And it is a pay per sale. So, in other words, there's no cost to uh, publishing the product data making this available, uh, but it's only when a conversion happens and you know, somebody actually transacts and buys something, the, 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 you do pay something. So the, uh, the cost of that is, uh, is posted here on this page, and uh, it does vary by product category. Um, I think the highest one here is uh, about 15% for uh, jewelry, I, I believe. Um, but uh, for, um, let me see, let's yeah, jewelry here, jewelry and watches, uh, that's 15%, uh, but uh, the rest of it is lower than that. Um, and if, in, if your uh, product that doesn't fall into one of these categories, then it kind of falls into this catch-all bucket, uh, which is uh, about 12%. Okay, so, so that's really the uh, cost of selling through this marketplace. Um, and, um, you know, uh, this link is on the foils, and we'll be sharing the foils, like I said. So you can look this up uh, once, once you have that. Um, so I think we are pretty excited about bringing this uh, as an additional channel on the Agile Iron side. So um, the, uh, we'll basically support the same workflows as all the other channels that we support, which is the ability to push products, remove products, uh, capture of uh, customer and transaction information for you to be able to do your fulfillment, manage history with customers, so on and so forth. Uh, the transmission of shipping information once you uh, ship the products to the customer, and then, of course, auto uh, updates of inventory and pricing. 
right? So essentially it will behave just like our current uh, implementations for Amazon or eBay or any of those types of things, right? So, um, so we are working with Google um, uh, um, in, in, in terms of developing this integration as well as validating you know, their APIs and stuff like that to facilitate this, uh, this model. And um, our expectation is that this will be available in a beta uh, around the third week of October. Um, so both, uh, both on the Agilent side as well as the Google side, we want, to be make, we want to make sure this is available for the holiday season. And, uh, you know, so that, uh, um, you know, merchants can take advantage of that and benefit from it. Um, and so that's what we're striving to achieve. Uh, but having said that, you know, there's moving parts on both sides. There's development on our side as well as development on Google's side because it's, it's new on there and as well, and it's not live at this point. So, you know, if you go into your Google Shopping and uh, Merchant Center and you log in, you're not going to find this thing as something that you can enable at this point, right? Because it is not publicly released yet. Um, so, so, there, so there is some... Uh, potential for variability there because just because of the fact that you know both of these systems have to you know get tested and validated and so on but uh, our expectation is that you know somewhere around that third week of October that we'll be able to do a beta with uh, with Google and we'll start with uh, a few customers and then expand out from there um, so in terms of the implementation on the Agile side uh, no channel costs uh, you know so till at the end of January so since this is sort of a uh, um, an initial launch here, you know, we won't uh, bill you for the cost of the channel uh, that you that needs to be added to support this uh, till the end of January, right? And after that, you can decide whether you want to keep it or not. Um, and then if you decide to keep it post end of January, then the regular channel costs uh, will apply depending on, depending on your addition and so on. Uh, in terms of the setup, our onboarding team will work with you to set this up, um, and we won't be charging any setup fees for that. Um, and again, this is still basically uh, during this window, right? Once it's production release and stuff, uh, then obviously, uh, you know, things become uh, more, more, more uh, like we do with, uh, you know, usual implementation. So, so if you are interested in participating, um, then please email us at support.agilion.com. We are not going to turn this on for everybody unless there's an expressed interest. And, uh, you know, I think, uh, you know, based on, you know, where the uh, deployment is going and how the beta is progressing, you know, we'll basically add customers, uh, you know, as we go, depending on how we see the uh, things playing out. Okay, so um, so if this is of interest, uh, just drop us a short email saying that you are interested in uh, participating in uh, Google Shopping Actions, and we'll keep you posted on uh, when it's ready to kind of roll out. Okay, um, so let me pause there. Uh, any questions on this particular topic? So one question was, uh, how does this implement a WooCommerce store? Uh, no, uh, so there is no store involved here, right? So this is basically uh, the, uh, you will essentially take product data that is in the Agile and back office. You will push them to uh, Google Shopping Actions. Um, this feed essentially uh, uh, communicates, you know, product pricing images, you know, all of that information. Uh, Google will then post this on uh, where, uh, based on their various sites in response to, you know, search terms, you know, specific videos, you know, whatever, you know, content-based marketing that they do. And when uh, somebody decides to purchase something, essentially they will do the checkout on that Google site, right? So they're not going to get redirected to somewhere else. It will happen on Google's properties. Um, and then what we will get is basically a order inside of Agiline that says, okay, you know, the customer has made this purchase on, on a Google site. And uh, essentially, it will come into Agile line for you to be able to fulfill um, and um, uh, and essentially ship the products to customers. Okay, so it will be more similar to our traditional, you know, Amazon, eBay, that type of stuff, where this is a separate marketplace, not connected to any e-commerce store, etc., that you may be hosting. Okay, any other questions? Okay, then let's jump into some of the other things we'll be uh, introducing in V11. So the next one is uh, CRM and back office enhancement. Um, so the first of those is a barcode label designer and editor. Uh, this has been a frequently requested item um, so that you can customize your barcode labels and so on and so forth, right? So, uh, so two elements here. One is uh, you can create templates now uh, under settings. And we'll walk through that. 
And, um, you know, using the designer, you can essentially construct, you know, variety of templates for different label sizes, so on and so forth. Uh, and then once you have those templates, then when you go to the print barcode function under the products module, you can select, you know, which template you want to essentially use and then, you know, print the barcode labels from there. Okay. So let's jump in and walk through that. Okay, so under this communication setup, you can see there's a new link here, barcode label template, right under the templates uh, uh, link. So you can click that. Gives you a list of uh, templates that you have. Okay, and uh, when you start out, obviously you wouldn't have any, but as you build these out, you know, you, you can, um, you know, create any number of these. Um, there is a column for height and width that shows you what this template, particular template, what size it, it's meant for. Uh, over here, you can do edit uh, to edit an existing template, make modifications, save it. Uh, if you want to delete it, you can do that. Um, and then the final column has a duplicate. If you want to take an existing template, make a copy of it, and you know, then modify it, you know, the duplicate function is available there as well. Okay. So let's do a new template. Okay. So, so this is the uh, designer screen. Uh, lots of controls here, um, and let's start with the size, right? So uh, many of the standard sizes that are typically used, you know, we've included them here. Um, and but if you wanted to go, uh, you know, to a different size that's uh, not one of the ones that we supported here, you have the ability to say custom, provide the uh, size, and then essentially get a canvas, uh, you know, for the size that you specify, right? So. So let's start with uh, this one here. Now the canvas that we're displaying here, uh, as it says here, it says it's showing in uh, you know two, two x size. So this is to enable you to work with a slightly bigger canvas. Uh, so everything is basically two times the size that it will be when you actually print it. Um, and um, you know before we actually release V11, we have also added a slider here that allows you to. Um, you know, decide what size you want to see that. So you can go down to 1x or you can go up to 4x or whatever. So, so that will be in V11 before it actually gets released. Okay, and then uh, down here, there is a map to grid or a function. So if you, when, when you place elements on this uh, canvas, uh, let's say, for example, you're adding a product code field, okay. So when you do that, you know, where you place it and where, when you resize it, you can see now that it actually snaps to uh, a, uh, this grid, grid um, you know, boundaries, right? And so this is to make sure that, you know, you're getting placement uh, to a particular accuracy that you want. Um, and here is the grid column size where you can specify, you know, how, how big you want that grid to be, right? So, so right now it's set to, um, you know, one eighth of an inch, right? And so that's the accuracy at which it's basically snapping to a particular location on the canvas, okay? Um, you can add text. Um, you can select from a variety of fields that you might want to display there, right? So I just added product code. I could add product name, right, place that. I could select price. Put that somewhere and then you can uh, select product barcode and add that. And that will display an image, right? And you can resize this as you see fit, right? So you can basically lay out, you know, various elements of what you want included in this barcode, right? So some of the things that I just went over are obviously the basic things that you want to have supported, which is name of the product, pricing, you know, barcode stuff like that. Uh, if you want to get more fancy, there are additional controls over here. So if you, for example, wanted to include your company logo on this label, you can upload a uh, image file and then include that on the label, uh, include that on the canvas, right? If you wanted to uh, put some rectangles, et cetera, to kind of put boundaries around certain things, et cetera, et cetera, you can do that as well and you can add uh, those, those figures, right? So. Um, and as you edit these things, uh, you can certainly have controls for modifying the font colors, sizes, you know, all of those types of things as well, right? So, so pretty uh, comprehensive editor in terms of your ability to design a label that you want, 
with the, exactly the elements and uh, place, placements and colors and you know fonts and so on and so forth, right? So, um, and so that those are the the basic elements of what's in this designer. And then over here, there are options to, for you to you know drop an element, you know move things back and forth, uh, make copies, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay. Um, so once you uh, essentially construct one of these, you say save template, and then that gets added to this list over here, right? So uh, let me just show you one of these ones that I've already created, and they'll basically you do the printing with that. Okay, so this is one that uh, I had uh, created ahead. So again, name, code, price, and, and a barcode, okay? So once these templates have been set up, then you go to product, and you select a, a one or more products, and you say print barcode. So now the first step here is you can select between standard and custom, right? So standard is you know the labels that have existed in uh, version 10 and, and previously, right? So those things are still available. So if you click standard, the flow will essentially be exactly what it was you know, in previous version. The new flow here is for custom, right? And here, if you select custom, you get to select which template, right? So we'll start with that. And then you go to the next step, and here you specify the quantities in the price book, right? So you could either pick the quantities based on how much is in stock at a particular location, or you can enter a number. So let's say we enter two, and we'll select a price book, and we'll say next. And this brings up a preview of uh, what you what you can expect to get. And so here you can see this reflects uh, the selections that we had made um, and in terms of and also at the uh, sort of font size, et cetera, that you saw in the in the template, right? So you got the name, the product code, the pricing, and the barcode, right? And then you can export this to PDF uh, if you wanted to uh, print this out to a printer. Okay. So, so pretty, uh, pretty simple flow, uh, but uh, pretty powerful in terms of what you can do with it. Um, and at this point, you know, any limitations that you might have had with those standard labels in terms of, you know, what you could do with it and how you wanted to make it look, um, you know, this is, uh, you know, with, with this editor, you can pretty much do whatever you need. Okay, so, so that's the uh, barcode label and designer. Uh, questions on that? Okay, so let me see. Um, so a question about, can I print a barcode on my packing slip that reflects the order number? So so that uh, particular element is something that's available through our templates for the uh, PDF, right? So this is specifically for printing barcodes that you want to stick on you know, your product uh, packages and, and things like that. Um, so, uh, in terms of printing barcodes on the packing slip, that functionality already exists. Uh, you can reach out to our support team, and they can help you uh, set that up. Um, in terms of the, uh, let me see, uh, any chance of adding Amazon checkout before Christmas? Um, so, Amazon is something that we have uh, uh, already within our uh, set of channels, right? So, that that's something that we have supported. I don't know if you mean something else in terms of uh, Amazon checkout, but uh, as a channel, Amazon is available. We have support for FBA as well, and we'll, we'll talk about some of the enhancements that we have added uh, there as well. Okay. All right. Um, let me switch back to the content here. Okay. So the uh, the next uh, item that we have um, added in V11 uh, is the uh, uh, return module for purchases, right? So. We have supported sales returns, which is your customers returning um, orders back to you. Uh, with V11, we're also supporting uh, return of purchases back to your vendor. So if you receive something from your vendor, it's damaged or it's not what you order or whatever. Now there is a module for you to manage purchase returns. Previously, you had to create an adjustment, etc., you know, um, and kind of manage that manually. And now um, you can create purchase returns just like you do with uh, sales returns, right? So you can start with your PO and, and say, you know, create return and uh, essentially, um, you know, be able to uh, manage that through the system, right? So, and in conjunction with this, with this, there is also a PO return shipping under the shipping and receiving. So we've kept this separate from the shipping so that we're not mixing up your customer orders from things that you're returning to your vendor. So. Uh, any PO returns that you create uh, that needs to go out um, would essentially be available under 
the PO returns uh, ship. Okay. Uh, to create uh, new ones, uh, you can start with uh, new purchase return at the top. You know, it will ask you for do you want to start with an existing purchase order or do you want to create a completely new one? And just like it does with the sales returns that's currently there. And then you got, get the familiar form where you select the vendor and you know, so on and so forth. All right. So we can have one example here. So we can take a quick look at that. So here's an example of uh, a PO return to uh, the vendor, Tiffany's. And you know your uh, as you might expect, it's got the product line items and you know and so on and so forth. Right? So, uh, so familiar form and uh, behaves pretty much like most other transactions uh, modules in the system. Um, and uh, you know, a new module here under orders for managing that. Okay. Okay. Um, let's move on to the Amazon integration enhancement. So, so two two big enhancements on the Amazon side in version eleven. One is um, a new seller listings directly from Agilion. So, uh, so far, uh, you know, if you have Amazon as a channel in Agilion, um, you know, we expect you to basically make the listing on the Amazon side and then come into Agilion and enter the ASIN number. Uh, with version 11, you can still continue to do that, but you can also uh, directly create listings from Agilion. So, you can take the product and the data that's here. Uh, will support you know uh, custom fields for various categories in Amazon, um, and then you can essentially push the product from here to Amazon, uh, and it will create the uh, listing. Uh, it will capture the ASIN number back into Agilion, so so it behaves like some of the other channels where you can just directly push products from here as opposed to creating them on the Amazon side. So so that's a pretty uh, uh, pretty uh, nice uh, new feature that's coming in version 11. Uh, the second one is FBA related. Um, so uh, with inbound shipments, uh, you know we've had uh, the capability on the Agile Iron side for FBA to uh, to create inbound shipments in Agile Iron for you know things that you might be shipping from your warehouse or from your vendor uh, to Amazon's FBA. Um, but I think there are some limitations in terms of some of the features and you know things that you can uh, do with those inbound shipments when directly creating in Agile Iron. So I think um, you know to be able to uh, access all the facilities that Amazon provides as it relates to creating inbound shipments, what we are doing now is supporting the ability for you to create those in inbound shipments directly on Amazon, right? So you can take advantage of all the features that they offer. And once you create that inbound shipment on the Amazon side, you know we will automatically pull that once it's been created and create the inventory transfer order in Agile. Right. So once the inbound shipment is uh, set up on your Amazon seller account, then uh, we'll recognize that in Agilion periodically, and um, you know we will automatically create a shipping order for that inventory transfer that needs to go from your warehouse uh, to Amazon. Okay. So those are the two big features that are coming up uh, in version 11 uh, when it comes to the Amazon uh, integration. So let me show you just uh, one quick change related to that. Um, uh, and uh, in terms of the supporting the uh, pushing of product. Um, so if we select the uh, Amazon channel, and let's say we select a product and say we're going to push this to Amazon, we've added a column here for the ASIN so that when you're pushing a product, you can see whether you know something already has, has an ASIN number or and which ones don't. If it is a product that does not, then you know it will display in red. So you can see that, uh, which ones have uh, ASINs versus which ones don't. Um, and then we'll treat these things uh, differently. Right? So in the case of ones where there is, there is an ASIN, we're not going to try to create uh, another listing. We're basically going to recognize that there, there is a listing and, and just basically make the connection uh, between Agile Iron's product and the existing listing. If there isn't one, and which in this case, this particular field would be colored in red, uh, we'll go ahead and basically uh, create the listing capture the ASIN back into the system, right? And and so the flow from here, once I click add the channel, will essentially split into two. It will first man take care of the ones where the ASIN exists. Um, and then uh, the screen will refresh. It will show you the ones that where the ASIN does not exist. And then uh, walk through those one by one in terms of uh, you know pushing those to uh, Amazon and create those listings. If there is an error with one of those, it will display on the screen as it kind of processes each of them one, one after. 
So, so that's, those are the two enhancements on the Amazon side. Um, let me see if there are uh, questions. Okay, um, no, no questions so far on the Amazon side. Uh, so let me go back to... Okay, so a couple of uh, productivity enhancements when it comes to these transaction forms. Uh, so, and this applies to sales orders, purchase orders, quotes, sales returns, and so on. And that uh, has to do with uh, you know, creating uh, accounts, contacts, et cetera, on the fly. So let me say new sales order. So you would see here for the account name, there is a plus button, right? Contact, there's a plus button, right? And then similarly for the product, there is a plus button now. So what this does is that, you know, if you're in the middle of a transaction and you want to essentially create a new customer or create a new product and add it to this transaction, you can now do that without leaving this page, right? So, um, so here, let me uh, just click on the plus, you'll get a form, you can fill in the details, uh, we may continue to expand the fields that are displayed here and ones that you can actually uh, select and enter, right? Uh, but uh, to, in version 11, we're going to start with a few fields. Um, and similarly for contact, you get a form, right? And uh, if I come down here to the product, um, what we do is basically go to the product wizard, which you're already familiar with. And then let's say we add one. allows you to add pricing, right? So let me just uh, put in a couple of pricing here. Uh, you can select a vendor for purchasing, right? So this is all the essentially familiar flow. If you've used the product wizard, you know, this is exactly the same one. The only difference is that once I hit, hit next and finish, this automatically gets entered here. You know, the pricing is uh, captured, you know, so on and so forth, right? So, Obviously, when you're using the product wizard, there's certainly other fields within the product that are not filled through this process because there are things like accounting information, so on and so forth. But you can go back and uh, you know work on those subsequently later once you've created this transaction. But you know within the uh, uh, transaction now, you can actually just create things on the fly. Okay. So that's with uh, products, uh, accounts for customers, contacts within uh, accounts, um, and on the PO side, same thing for vendors. Right, so you can do all of these things on the fly, okay? Uh, one other feature is uh, we've added barcode scanning support. So uh, on the point of sale, for example, you might be used to you know, scanning a barcode and adding that as a line item automatically. Um, and so here within, uh, within these forms as well, we've added the same kind of support. So for example, I enter a barcode, you can see that as I do that, it automatically starts filling these things in, right? So essentially support for barcode scanning is now available here. And this is, you know, obviously you can see that as you enter it, it automatically adds the line item. So you can do scan, 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 and quickly uh, create the line items, right? So this support as well is available across all of the uh, transaction types, uh, SOs, POs, sales returns, uh, quotes, and so on, okay? Um, questions regarding that? So the question, can you add a matrix item product with a plus? Uh, currently not. So the product wizard does currently have a limitation when it comes to matrix item products. Uh, we will be working on removing that limitation, but uh, yes, that, that's a good question. Currently it does not, uh, but it does support all of the other uh, product types uh, with, with, the, with the plus one. Okay, um, let's jump on to the uh, next one. Uh, QuickBooks related enhancements. So some of these have been uh, heavily requested features and we're excited to finally, uh, finally capture those. Um, the first of those is um, uh, providing support for um, uh, summary sync. Um, and this essentially means that uh, right now, for example, if you get a customer order from eBay or Amazon or something like that, we post the entire transaction, create a customer and could be QBO, et cetera. And this can be a problem for somebody doing a lot of volume that you know, every one of these things creates a sales receipt and, and on the QuickBooks side. 
So if you don't want that to happen, you know, we've added summary sync where uh, what it essentially means is that you take a bunch of orders and you say summary sync, and um, that will be essentially instead of creating individual transactions, it'll just create journal entries that post basically the income and the cogs and inventory asset movement and so on and so forth, right? So, um, so that's, that's essentially, so individual uh, transactions are not created, customers are not created, uh, the only thing that you would do is basically create a journal entry that's a, a summary of, you know, the transactions that you have chosen to uh, do the summary. With. Okay. Um, the second one is scheduled sync. Uh, essentially means that you do not have to go to that screen and click sync for the sync to happen. That the system will automatically sync at periodic intervals. Uh, with the initial rollout, we'll be doing this basically every hour. Um, and um, I think subsequently we'll add the customization so that um, you know you can decide at what frequency you want it to happen. Okay. Uh, both of these are obviously optional. You don't have to use these features. You can continue doing what you're doing today. But if you want to take advantage of them, I'll show you quickly um, uh, where you find it. Okay. Um, and then the third bullet there is the uh, PO partial received sync. So uh, we have the ability for you to receive partial uh, shipments on your POs from vendors. Um, and so that port is already exists in the system. Uh, what we've not supported is if you do that, then you know the PO doesn't sync till you've received everything, right? And so this is a, a feature that we're adding now, where let's say you've ordered ten line items and you know you get six of them in. Uh, what uh, if you turn this feature on? What will happen is that um, the uh, the system will sync, will make available to sync the line items that have been received. Um, and then you can sync that, sync that, it will go away from the queue. And then uh, when you receive the next four, you know, it will pop up onto the, uh, the queue again, and you can sync, sync the second uh, batch that you received. Um, now, and when we do these uh, on the QBO side, uh, you know, the reference numbers will basically have a added index that says, you know, one, two, three, that type of thing. So if, let's say, for example, if it's PO 55, it will say AI dash PO dash 55 dash one dash two, you know, that type of thing, right? So, so there's still a connection between these things, but, you know, they will be posted as, as the receiving happens. Okay. All right. Let me jump in here. So under settings QuickBooks, uh, there will be this control here for enable auto sync. By default, it will be off. Uh, but if you check this box and you, confirm at the bottom here, then the auto sync will be turned on, right? And like I said, in the uh, version 11 initial release here, um, you know, it will be uh, something that uh, syncs every uh, every hour, okay? And then uh, on the uh, accounting QuickBooks export page, There is an additional button for syncing uh, summaries. Okay, so you can see this is a sync to sync QuickBooks button that you're used to seeing and one that uh, you know you've been using in the past, and there's this new button here for sync summary. So the idea would be that you would select a, a set of orders. You can certainly do filters based on channel, et cetera, if, if you wanted to basically select all the orders from eBay or something like that. Um, and then you can say sync summary, and that will create uh, the uh, uh, journal entries as opposed to individual transaction in, in QuickBooks, okay? All right. Um, then next on to the uh, Zapier integration. Uh, this is also an exciting uh, new integration that uh, you know we've been working on for a while. Um, and uh, uh, one of the uh, primary motivations here is to you know connect to a variety of uh, other SaaS apps that you know you may use for a variety of purposes. Um, one of the most common requests is related to integrations with email marketing apps like Mailchimp, for example. Right. So Zapier.com is is a um, connection point for various SaaS apps to be able to, you know, talk to each other, right? Um, and if you go to zapier.com slash apps, you can see a list of apps that are supported. Um, and so uh, here you can see there are obviously, you know, a whole host of them. 
And if you kind of break it up by, you know, category, you can see uh, different tools within, you know, each of these buckets. Okay. Uh, MailChimp, like I said, is one of the more popular email marketing tools. And so we get a lot of requests regarding integration with that. So that'll be our initial focus um, in terms of, you know, supporting the connection points that are needed for email marketing uh, tools. But uh, once we uh, get the initial release out, um, you know, we'll expand these connection points to, uh, to additional tools, right? So it really is about, um, you know, exposing the various uh, APIs from our side uh, that make sense in, you know, various contexts, right? So the way the connections happen is, is through what are called uh, connection points, triggers, and actions. So if we take MailChimp as an example, uh, you can see here under triggers and actions, there's a list of, you know, the kinds of things that trigger uh, an event uh, that an a, a external tool can then basically act on, right? So, for example, you know, if there is, if you've got your website and, uh, you know, you've got a form there that's connected to your MailChimp account to capture somebody that subscribes to your email newsletters, right? When that new subscriber comes in, there is a trigger that happens, Right. And so if you wanted uh, that trigger to basically um, uh, capture that subscriber as a lead inside of Agile Iron, then, you know, the mechanism to do that is to essentially connect to this trigger with MailChimp, right? So once we have the version one, version 11 release, uh, Agile Iron will be listed among these apps that, you know, you saw in that list there. Um, and then you basically say, okay, I want to connect Agile Iron to MailChimp, right? So this is that box here, right? Um, and then once you connect it, you can basically say, okay, what kinds of events am I subscribing to? And, you know, what are the actions that need to be taken when these things happen, right? So, so we'll be, uh, in this initial release with Zapier, we'll be exposing the APIs that make sense in the context of email marketing tools like MailChimp, right? So, for example, you know, pushing contact data from Agile Lion to MailChimp. If you get a new subscriber on MailChimp, we capture that into Agile Lion as a lead, right? Um, you know, uh, if there is an update to an email address, we push that, right? If somebody uh, does an email opt-out, right, then we recognize that and update Agile Iron, right? So those types of flows, things that make sense in the context of, you know, these types of apps, right? So that'll be our initial focus with Zapier. Um, and then once we, um, uh, once we get past that, then we'll obviously expand it to uh, additional, uh, additional areas, okay? Um, so, so that's the uh, Zapier uh, piece of this. Um, questions on that? Okay. So there was one question, is QBD summary sync available? So not in version 11. So in version 11, uh, we will be focusing on QBO for summary sync, um, and we'll look at uh, QBD uh, subsequently. Okay, well, somebody wanted to see one more time how to do auto sync. Right, so let me go back to that. So you would go to settings up here and scroll down and click on QuickBooks. And uh, right here, there's the switch for enable auto sync. So you just turn, turn this checkbox on and uh, you click confirm settings at the bottom and uh, that will enable uh, the uh, auto sync. Uh, what about integration with third-party CRMs? Yeah, so I think uh, uh, some of the things that I already talked about in terms of uh, what's needed for email marketing, in terms of syncing contacts and stuff like that, those are obviously applicable to CRMs as well. So a subset of what CRMs might you know, want to do is certainly covered by that. Um, but depending on specific CRMs and you know, all the things that they support, there may be additional things that might make sense, right? And um, that will be something that uh, we have to expand to cover. Uh, so can uh, sales numbers be integrated into third-party CRMs for reporting? Um, I guess we may have to uh, look at that. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, right now we haven't focused on that particular piece as far as this integration is concerned. But uh, really, I think once this integration is, play, in, is in place, um, you know, adding connection points is really just about enabling additional APIs. So we'll be happy to take uh, inputs in terms of things that you guys want to do. and. Uh, you know, offer those uh, as it makes sense. Okay. All right. And then the uh, last piece here is the API Explorer for developers, right? So Agile Lion has offered APIs, you know, for a while. 
uh, we continue to expand uh, that API set to cover, you know, additional modules and, you know, uh, things within the application. Uh, but uh, its usage has been somewhat difficult in terms of, you know, how, how you, uh, you know, in terms of documentation and, uh, and, and things like that. So this is our, um, you know, our attempt to, you know, really uh, provide a useful tool for developers so that, one, there is good documentation in terms of examples and, you know, code and stuff like that. Uh, but also there is a explorer where you can interactively actually try out the APIs, right? So you don't have to write code. You can actually try try out the APIs by just putting in the required data elements, you know, hitting the hitting the system, you know, and 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 basically testing them out, right? So, so let me jump in and show you that. Okay, so this is the uh, uh, this is the API explorer. Okay, so you can see here on the left hand side is all the various APIs. So as an example, here's one for contact. Um, and all of the Agile Line APIs are REST APIs. Um, this essentially means that you're hitting a URL and you're either passing or receiving uh, data in the form of XML or JSON, right? Um, and in most of these cases, really there are you know, four APIs that uh, are attached to each module. So for example, with a contact, there's one to, for you to add a contact, there's one for you to update a contact, this one for you to read, which essentially means get me a contact and whatever information goes with it. And then there's one for delete, right? And similarly, you can see one for the same ones of product, right? Um, and so if you, let's say we go to read contact, um, you know, here's the URL that you would hit, right? Uh, your company here is uh, the one that's specific to your Agile instance. So, so you need to provide the one that, you know, is, is your instance, the URL. Um, and the rest of it is, you know, stays the same, right? So um, here is an example, you know, for the your company, let me put in mine. Okay. Um, and then contact parameters, you know, since we're trying to read a contact, you've got to give it either an ID or a name or an email, right? So let me give it an email. Okay. And then I can click try it. Right, so when I click try it, it asks me for the security key, right? So I will go get that. So I'll enter that here. And then as soon as I hit this, you can see that I got the output over here, right? Um, and now this is XML, so it's a little hard to read, but, uh, but uh, you know, if you're a developer, you, you recognize it and you know what to do with it. Um, and then across the top here, you can see that, you know, the code for what we just did is available uh, in curl format for PHP users, you know, Node, Ruby, JavaScript, Python, different programming languages, right? So uh, depending on, you know, which one you're using for your development, you know, you can find the, uh, you know, necessary code to, to accomplish, you know, what we just saw here, right? So, so it's a really nice tool for you to interactively, you know, build out uh, your usage of the API, test things out, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and if you need support, obviously we are here to, to help in terms of, you know, building that integration, okay? Uh, now at the top, there's also guides. So if I open up guides here, um, you can see this is actually, you know, the complete documentation. Right, so for the same set of uh, you know APIs, there's complete documentation, and here's an ex uh, example of you know the the content that you need to send, etc. And it's available both as JSON and as XML. Okay, um, and then similarly for you know all of the uh, other uh, APIs that we offer. Okay, so this will be something that we'll be adding to our website. It'll be available you know as a link uh, on agileline.com uh, once we are uh, live with. Uh, uh, version. Okay, so I think uh, that pretty much covers uh, everything in, in terms of version 11. So uh, just to sort of uh, re-emphasize the elements here, Google Shopping Action, you know, new marketplace, you know, please let us know if you're interested and, you know, we'll try to get you guys into that program towards the end of October. Uh, and then with all of these other, other elements, uh, these things will roll out as, as normally does with the release of V11. So our plan in terms of the uh, rollout is uh, general availability in early October, uh, in a week or 10 days. Um, and this will include everything that I described except for Google Shopping Actions. So Google Shopping Actions will not be released 
as part of the general release. It will be something that we do with select customers, and it will be an opt-in based thing where you communicate your interests, and then we'll reach out and basically set that up separately for you. Um, and uh, you know that will most likely happen towards the uh, third week of October. Okay, but the general V11 release uh, in about a week or ten days. Okay, exact date you will receive email email communication regarding that. Okay, um, uh, let me go to Q and A and see uh, what other questions have come in. Okay, um, I think, uh, yes, I think there was an observation that, uh, you know, obviously some of the development stuff and things like that is is not uh, something that uh, is clear unless you are a developer, and that's fine. Uh, this is really meant for situations where you have such a resource or you want us to build something, And uh, but uh, I don't expect that, you know, uh, you, uh, end users would be uh, necessarily familiar with that. Uh, but I think the the only thing takeaway from this is that you know if you do have let's say a three PL or you know if you have a web store website developer or something like that and they they reach out to you and go okay you know I need to be able to pull some data you know how do I do that then essentially all you would need to do is basically send them this site which will essentially be developer dot agile dot com and then they can essentially figure it out from there right so that's really why that resource is provided so that you can basically just forward that URL to them. And it will have everything that they need to be able to, you know, build that integration. Okay, um, let me see if there's anything else I haven't gone over. Okay, I think that I think that. Uh, Okay, I think that about covers it. Um, so I, I guess we'll return 10 minutes back to you and uh, thanks for joining. Uh, as I mentioned at the uh, beginning, we'll send the video and the files out to you guys uh, by tomorrow. And um, you know, we'll, uh, we'll communicate the exact release date for version 11. And if you're interested in Google Shopping actions, just uh, send an email to support.agileline.com. Thanks and uh, goodbye.